As a Christian, the scriptures often say we're to be doing good to everyone we can, especially to believers, Galatians 6.10 says. And when we do so, Jesus said it's just like we fed and clothed him, Matthew 25.40. And sometimes it's hard to do it for unbelievers. I remember the last time we had the big creation seminar here, and, and we were having all those seminars on Saturday, and one of the ushers came to me and said, there's someone out there you better talk to. And it was one of these completely black-clothed people with metal pierced all over, black around their eyes, black-enhanced eyebrows, black lipstick on. It was a man, black fingernails. And they came in and they said, I know you don't want to talk to me and I don't want to talk to you, but I'm desperate. You know, I just got thrown off my bus. I didn't have the fare. I'm trying to get to Houston. And I don't like anything in this place. I feel very uncomfortable being here. But I knew that you all would help. And I thought, uh huh, help? Probably a Satanist? I mean, that's probably what that black, pers- black stuff was about, that whole setup. And so I tried to share the gospel point, and, and they said, Do I have to listen to this to get money? I said, Yes, you do. And so they stood there like this, and just, and, and just kept going through. And finally, after delivering the simple truth of Christ dying for sins and sinners, and they could freely call upon him, they looked at me and they said, Are you done? I said, I am. They said, Are you going to give me money? I said, Yeah, hold out your hand. And I took out some money. I've never done this before. I looked them right in the eye, those dark eyes. And I said, I give you this in the name of Jesus Christ and for his glory. And they just, I mean, they didn't even want to take it, but they did. And the track, and hustled out the door. That's an extreme example of doing good to all. It's rare, anybody that far away. But especially within the church, that's what James is talking about. He used the simple test of compassion. John emphasizes salvation changes our self-focused hearts into hearts of compassion, like Christ. In fact, turn there with me. Turn back to 1 John chapter 3. I want you to see this because to the end of the epistles, this idea of compassionless Christians being dead is mentioned. The epistles are the letters to the churches. And these letters to the churches underscore that there must be a change more than in our talk. It has to be a change in behavior. 1 John 3, look at verse 17. If anyone has... 1 John 3, 17. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need. Now, all the way through the the gospel, I mean, this is firsthand to Christians. And then you could, you know, expand it to other brother humans. but, But especially within the church, if your brother is in need and you have no pity on him, How can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and truth. Verse 18. Do you remember the story Jesus told about three busy travelers on the Jericho to Jerusalem highway? All three were headed to a good place, Jerusalem. All three had good plans, had good schedules. Nothing was bad about the three of them in that sense, but one of them had true compassion in their heart, like Christ. What do we call that story? The story of the Good Samaritan. What was Jesus emphasizing? He was emphasizing it's not enough to have good plans and good intents and to have good words and everything else if it's not accompanied by a heart that's been changed by God, a heart of love and compassion. Sometimes we need to be reminded that the two religious passerbys in the Good Samaritan story, the Levite and the priest, were students of God's word. Both of them could articulate and defend their faith, but neither of them could display that faith in good works prompted by God's love. That takes us back. Look back at James chapter 2 and verse 14. Because if you look closely at verse 14, James says something. The literal rendering of verse 14 should be, can that kind of faith save him? Can it? Can a faith without works flowing from it, works energized and prompted and empowered by the Holy Spirit, can that faith save him? And of course, the answer is no. Look at verse 17 of James 2. Faith without good works is false faith. It's dead faith. 
Over 400 years ago, as the faithful expositor of this passage, John Calvin declared while he preached these verses a famous saying you've all heard. This is what he said. It is faith alone that justifies, but faith that justifies can never be alone. You understand that? Justifying faith is heart-transforming, life-changing, compassion and love of God implanting faith. And so, it always is true that healthy faith is true saving faith will never be by itself in a believer's life. It will always bring spiritual life and that life will produce good works in varying degrees, in varying amounts, but there will always be good works accompanying genuine saving faith 